Dr. Farish, Ms. Reed, Ms. Steyer, Dr. Hushman, Dr. Sosa, parents and friends, and especially you graduates. Thank you for such a warm welcome and congratulations to each of you on your accomplishments. This is a great day and I am delighted and privileged to be a part of this celebration as we honor you and your achievements. You are receiving your master's and your doctorate degrees. You've worked very hard to achieve a higher level of knowledge. As our other speakers have said, many of you have earned your degrees while juggling careers and families. For others, this was your full-time job. Regardless of how you got here today, this is your moment. Yo, your reward for your... Your reward for your dedication comes right now. You have earned your degree and are ready for the next challenge. Each of you will have the distinct privilege of putting your stamp on the future. You are at a crossroads. How will you make an impact on those around you, on your community, on your profession? How can you make a difference? To paraphrase the poet Longfellow in A Psalm of Life, what will your footprints in the sands of time look like? I believe there are at least four ways you can make a difference and leave a lasting legacy. By having courage, the courage to take a risk, by being a leader, by acting with integrity in all you do, and by giving back to your community. Our lives are filled with turning points, like the one before you today. Many of those turning points are filled with risks. It requires courage to take those risks and make an impact on the world around you. I speak from personal experience. I have the distinction of being one of the first few undergraduate women to receive a degree from the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. When I first met with one of my professors and I told him I wanted to major in corporate finance, I was promptly laughed at. You're a dilettante, he said. That's the way he dismissed me. <laughs> A dilettante. I had never heard that word before. I had to go out and look it up. <laughs> he said I wasn't serious. Oh, I was serious, all right. He challenged me, and that motivated me. There was a certain degree of risk involved in trying something that few women had ever done before. For a person with little self-esteem and a lack of confidence, that might have been the end of the story. But my parents had prepared me for that day. My father encouraged me to take paths that few women had taken. If you think you can do it, you can. The giraffe never took a step forward unless she stuck her neck out. My father had a reservoir of maxims, and he gave me another one of his favorites. Life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. Rest assured, I made the most of my opportunity, not to show how wrong the professor was, but to prove how right I was. The right to believe I belong there, and the right to believe I would succeed. With faith in yourselves and some courage, you're going to be able to face your future enthusiastically. As an entrepreneur 30 years ago, I was challenged by what, had laid, that what would lay ahead, but it never once occurred to me that I might fail. Failure was not an option. Did I worry at times? Of course I did. 
but I channeled all that energy into my work and my goals. I followed the advice of one of our great American philosophers, Yogi Berra. When you come to a fork in the road, take it. Have courage, take a risk, be a leader. Leaders are defined by the challenges they face and overcome. I think about Steve Jobs, who co-founded Apple. He has been facing serious health illnesses for so many years. But his courage and his leadership continue to define him as his company builds its brand on two of the most successful communications products the iPhone and the iPad. And you can be sure that Mr. Jobs' work is not finished. He is inspired. Another leader, not so well known to you, but very well known to me, was Tom O'Hara. Tom was my first major client. He passed away just two years ago at the age of 95. After serving in World War II, Tom returned home to complete his education, and he began work as an accountant in the Michigan School District. He met another man who was an expert investing in stocks. Tom learned from him, but Tom had more. He had courage and he had a vision. With his wife, he traveled the country bringing investment education to everyone he met. Eventually, Tom built a world-famous organization, the National Association of Investors, that taught millions of individuals how to protect themselves from financial uncertainty. In doing so, for more than 50 years, Tom changed so many lives for the better. The commitment to become a leader must come from inside yourself. That special desire to lead the parade, not just sit on the sidewalk and applaud as it passes by. Leaders go to great lengths to achieve their goals, but not at the expense of losing who they really are. True leaders, true leaders inspire by their examples, not merely by their words. How will you lead? What example will you set? Nothing molds your reputation as a leader more than as an individual than living your life according to high ethical principles. When you have integrity, and live by a strong code of ethics, you build credibility and trustworthiness. When you give your word, people will believe you. When you speak honestly and with sincerity, people will listen. When you act, people will know you are acting with a distinct and meaningful purpose, not just for appearances. Your reputation is a reflection of your values, confirmed by your actions. And where do ethics come from? My mother taught me to live by the golden rule. While you learn the basics of ethics early on, you keep learning more every day of your life with every decision you make. Good ethical judgments guide you in making all of your life's choices and ultimately in doing the right thing. I hope you will remember the principles you've learned because too many people forget. That's why we hear about one crisis or another day after day. Doing the right thing could prevent so many of those incidents from occurring. Ultimately, living ethically means not just respecting the rules, but striving to improve them. Lead the way. 
Whether it's in business, education, engineering, communications, the arts or sciences, or in everyday life, stand up for what you believe in and pass on what you have learned. Doing the right thing is contagious. Another very important part of leadership is giving back. We have a responsibility to one another. When you care about others and do what you can to help them, you can't help but become a better person yourself. So give back to your community by volunteering. Give back to younger colleagues by being a mentor. Give back to your friends and your family by being there when they need you the most. Life is a big chain. I help you, you help someone else, and eventually the thanks and rewards come back to you. As Winston Churchill said, you make a living from what you get, but you make a life from what you give. Whatever you decide to do from this moment forward, consider it a beginning. The rest depends on you. Your leadership, your courage, your integrity, your charity. As the next generation of leaders in your field, you have the advantage of access to an unprecedented range of knowledge, including the whole history of human error. Have courage, take a risk, don't be afraid of errors. Knowledge is everywhere, even in the fortune cookie I got the other night. It said, the only people who never fail are those who never try. Leaders don't worry about their mistakes. They learn from them. Nor do they whine about life not being fair. Every moment invested in wondering whether life is fair is a moment wasted. Self-pity and finding someone to blame sap your creative energy and produce not one positive result. Leaders lead. I challenge you to do the same. Be a leader. More than 70 years ago, when the movie The Wizard of Oz was first released to theaters, the complaint came back that the movie was too long. Theater owners wanted it shortened. Suggestions including, included cutting the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow. The producer stood firm. He said no. As you know, this song went on to become one of the most popular songs in history. Somewhere Over the Rainbow is a song about dreams and believing that wonderful things can happen. Today, I urge you to combine the message of Somewhere Over the Rainbow with a parallel version of reality, which I call Somewhere Under the Rainbow. There's a world out there that we deal with every day, and it's not always perfect under that rainbow. But we have hope as we dream of another world, a happier world, somewhere over that rainbow, bringing those worlds closer together. That is the unfinished agenda of our lifetime. Congratulations, graduates. Take the lead, have courage, be ethical, be charitable, and don't forget, be nice. Strive for that happier, more perfect world. Thank you so much for allowing me to share this very happy occasion with you, and congratulations again.